Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In this lecture, I'll be discussing the treatment principles of malignant bone tumors. By the end of this lecture, you're supposed to answer the following questions. You have to know what surgical margins are, what is limb salvage, and what are the contraindications to limb salvage. You'll be able to know the different reconstructive options used after resection of bone tumors, and how do we choose among them. You know the rationale of chemotherapy in treating bone tumors, and you know the rationale of radiotherapy in treating bone tumors. First of all, we have to remember that a patient with a bone tumor is not necessarily suffering from a local disease. But in many types of bone tumors, it is actually a generalized disease. So he has a tumor in the bone, but also micrometastasis in blood. If we think of him as a localized disease and just treat his bone tumor, eventually he'll develop metastasis and die. So we have to treat him both locally and systemically. Different bone tumors are treated differently. Whereas tumors like chondrosarcomas are treated with surgery alone, Osteosarcoma, on the other hand, is treated by both surgery and chemotherapy, whereas Ewing sarcoma is treated by chemotherapy and surgery or radiotherapy as a local treatment. So why do we give chemotherapy? There is a, a very a common misconception that chemotherapy is given just to facilitate surgery or it's given to decrease the size of the tumor whereas this is not the aim of giving chemotherapy. Chemotherapy is given to target the micrometastasis in blood. So it's a crucial player in the treatment of bone sarcomas. Uh, it's only given to uh, types of tumors that are chemosensitive, like osteosarcoma, Ewing sarcoma, and fibrosarcoma. And it's given either following surgery, what we call adjuvant chemotherapy, or before surgery, what we call neoadjuvant chemotherapy, so it's given before and after. Uh, several drugs are used, like adriamycin, cisplatinum, high dose methotrexate, and all these are given as a multi drug regimen. If you give a single drug, it usually causes drug resistance, but when you use multiple drugs, you decrease the chance of developing drug resistance. Obviously, there are chemotherapy. Uh, toxicity affecting the heart, the kidneys, uh, the bone marrow, but most of these toxic side effects are manageable. Radiotherapy, on the other hand, is given for radiosensitive tumors, which accounts for most of the round cell tumors. It's given in a fractionated fashion. And all the recent technology always aims at giving the maximum dose to the tumor, but sparing the adjacent normal tissue. It also has early and late complications. Surgery, which is the main topic of our lecture today, could be either amputation or limb salvage. But whatever you do, whether amputation or limb salvage, you always have to achieve what we call a wide margin of resection. So what is a wide margin? And what are the surgical margins that we should know? Anything? divided the surgical margins into four types, either intralesional, marginal, wide, and radical. If you look to the picture on the right, this is the tumor in the middle and surrounded by a pseudocapsule, which is in the yellow color, and then the white and red are the normal tissues. If your resection margins goes through the tumor, like when we do curettage, this is called intralesional margin. And obviously, this is not suitable for malignant tumors. It's suitable for benign tumors. If you go remove the tumor by passing through the pseudocapsule, the yellow color, hence you remove the tumor in total, but micrometastasis will be left behind. So this is also suitable for benign tumors and not suitable for malignant tumors. If you go through normal tissue, when you remove the tumor with a cuff of normal tissue, this is called a wide margin. If you go and remove the whole compartment, this is called a radical margin. The minimum margin required for treating malignant bone tumors is a wide margin. 
This is an example of an osteosarcoma to demonstrate uh, uh, how the margin looks. And if you look at the microscopic picture, this is the uh, tumor tissue, and this is the bone and periosteum, and these are the attached muscles. So in these two millimeters, you can see that the tumor is covered by bone, periosteum, and the muscle attachment. This is two millimeters of margin. Is this a wide margin? Yes, definitely it is. So a wide margin is defined by the quality of the margin that has to be free of tumor tissue and not by the quantity or the size. So two millimeter of, of normal tissue is a wide margin, so as two centimeters, so as 20 centimeters. All these are considered wide margin of resection. So how do we define limb salvage? Limb salvage means the preservation of a functional limb after adequate oncologic resection of the tumor and reconstruction of the resultant bone and soft tissue defect. So when do we do limb salvage? We ask ourselves two questions. Will limb salvage offer the same oncologic margin as an amputation? If yes, we go ahead. Will limb salvage offer a functional limb that is superior to an amputation fitted with a prosthesis? If yes, we go ahead. So there are two prerequisites, to have a safe oncologic margin and to have a resultant limb that is superior than an amputation. So when do we not do an, uh, a limb salvage and uh, do an amputation? Mostly in situations in which we don't, we cannot achieve a wide margin of resection. Like if we have an infected, open or misplaced biopsy, when the neurovascular bundle is involved by the tumor, when we have a mobile pathological fracture with hematoma dispersed around the surrounding muscles, or in very young individual in which uh, even if we can do a safe limb salvage, the reconstruction that we do cannot cope with the leg length discrepancy in the future. Limb salvage is composed of two components, resection with a wide margin and reconstruction of the resultant defect. The types of resection are either intra-articular resection, like when we go through the joint and remove the distal femur or the proximal tibia, or extra-articular resection in which we remove the tumor together with the adjacent joint closed when we have an intra-articular extent, or intercalary resection when the tumor is in the middle of the bone and we, our resection is away from the joint. Reconstructive modalities are many. We classify them into four groups, either biological reconstruction, like which is uh, here in the green color, either autografts or allografts. The autografts could be vascularized graft or non-vascularized. The vascularized could be free or pedicled. The non-vascularized grafts could be classical, uh, non-vascularized or recycled bone. Allografts could be osteoarticular or intercalar. The second group is the endoprosthetic group, and it includes modular prosthesis, custom-made prosthesis, expandable prosthesis, and 3D printed implants. We can also have combinations, reconstructions, which are composed of allograft and a prosthesis, recycled bone and a prosthesis, allograft and vascularized fibula, recycled bone and vascularized fibula composites. And we have the miscellaneous group, like bone transport, centralization, uh, rotation plasty, and in some cases, we don't do reconstruction, like when we resect the proximal fibula or uh, parts of the pelvis. So how do we choose among these many reconstructive options? There are factors that influence our choice. The age, what we do for young individuals different than adults, the size of the bony defect, the site of the bony defect, and the available muscles after resection. In order to have a mobile reconstruction, we need muscles to move them. If we have to remove all the muscles, we'd resort to something that causes joint fusion. The need for adjuvant chemo and radiotherapy, the sex of the patient, the occupation, what he needs this reconstruction for, and the intelligence to use sophisticated uh, reconstructive options. We'll pass through different reconstructive modalities in different sites of the body so that you can have an overview of how we use these reconstructive techniques. We begin with the humerus. This is an osteosarcoma of the proximal humerus after a section of reconstruction with a modular prosthesis. This is an osteosarcoma of the proximal humerus reconstructed with a vascularized fibular graft 
can see how the fibula hypertrophies with time. Another technique for reconstruction is the pedicle scapular crest graft that we can, which is the lateral border of the scapula based on the circumflex scapular vessel. And we use it to reconstruct the proximal humerus, like in this case of an osteosarcoma of the proximal humerus. And you can see here the pedicle scapular crest with uh, shoulder fusion. Epiphyseal transplantation is used in children to maintain the length of the humerus. After a section of the proximal humerus, we use the proximal fibula, uh, vascularized based on the anterior tibial vessels that supplies the epiphysis to maintain the length of the humerus. Intercalary humeral uh, resections are usually reconstructed with vascularized fibular graft. Distal humeral defects, like this patient with a metastatic thyroid cancer, resected and reconstructed with a modular prosthesis. For distal radial reconstruction, we usually use non-vascularized fibula with wrist fusion. This is a patient with a Ewing sarcoma of the metacarpal, which was resected and reconstructed with recycled metacarpal bone. Following scapulectomy for malignant tumors of the scapula, we usually use no reconstruction. We suspend the humerus to the clavicle or chest wall. Now we move to the lower limb reconstruction. This is the chondrosarcoma of the proximal uh, femur, resected and reconstructed with a modular prosthesis. This is a Ewing sarcoma of the proximal femur, resected and reconstructed with a vascularized fibula and hip fusion. Intercalary resections of the femur, like the humerus, are also reconstructed with biological reconstruction, like a vascularized fibular graft. This is an osteosarcoma of the uh, distal femur, where we spared the condyles and reconstructed the defect following resection of the tumor with a composite of an allograft and a vascularized fibula inside. So, and here you can see the pedicle of the, uh, the vascular pedicle and as to most to the main vessels. And the fibula would give the viability and early union, whereas the allograft would give the durability and the con of the construct. You can see how it heals quickly here. Osteosarcoma of the distal femur reconstructed with a modular prosthesis. And when all the quadriceps are involved, like in this osteosarcoma, we reconstruct with a vascularized fibula and knee fusion. You can see how it hypertrophies to reach the size of the original femur. It's a durable reconstruction, but with a fused knee. In children, osteosarcoma of the distal femur and reconstructed with an expandable prosthesis. And the expandable prosthesis allows us to increase the length of the prosthesis with time so as to diminish the leg, leg length discrepancy. There are different types of expandable prosthesis. This is another type that is lengthened by an electromagnetic field. And you can see how the length increases by time. Another method for reconstruction for children like in this patient with a huge osteosarcoma of the distal femur, in which we uh, did a rotation plasty. It's done through a rhomboid incision, which we resect everything apart from the sciatic nerve. And then we do anastomosis of the femoral vessels to the tibial vessels and fix the proximal femur to the tibia. This is the brace that he uses for rotation plasty. And you can see here that whenever he does dorsiflexion of the ankle, he's doing flexion of the knee whereas plantar flexion of the ankle causes extension of the knee. And he walks with a brace. It's a very functional reconstruction and superior to an amputation. For tibia reconstruction, this is an osteosarcoma of the proximal tibia resected and reconstructed with a modular prosthesis. When we do hemicondylar resection, we usually use uh, allografts. This is a hemicondylar allograft after resection and fusion. Intercalary tibia reconstruction is reconstructed with a pedicle fibula, ipsilateral pedicle, uh, vascularized pedicle fibula from the same size. For distal tibia resections, like this patient with the distal tibial osteosarcoma, it's resected and reconstructed with a pedicle fibula. And you can see how it hypertrophies with fusion of the ankle. Pelvic resections are usually reconstructed by fusing what remains of the bone, like in this patient with an ischiofemoral fusion or an iliofemoral fusion. 
And this is the congenital sarcoma of the iliac bone after a section and reconstruction with a non-vascularized fibula to close the pelvic ring. Sacral resection do not need any reconstruction, they're just resected, like in this patient. So what is our take home messages? By the end of this lecture, you should have known what surgical margins are, uh, what is the definition of limb salvage and what are the contraindications to limb salvage. You should know the reconstructive options following resection of bone tumors and how we choose among them. You should know the rationale of chemotherapy and rationale of radiotherapy in treating bone tumors. At the end of this presentation, I would like to acknowledge all my colleagues in the Orthopedic Oncology Unit at Asr al -Aini University Hospital, who shared in the treatment of the patients whom I showed in my presentation today. And in particular, Professor Dr. Sharif Amin, our eminent microsurgeon, who did a lot of the uh, biological reconstruction that I've shown. Uh, in particular, the free vascularized fibular graft and the epiphyseal transfers. Uh, thank you all, and waiting for your genuine comments. أتمنى أن يكون الفيديو ده كان مفيد لكم وفي انتظار تعليقاتكم وأي comments أو استفسارات وإن شاء الله أقدر أرد عليها في أقرب فرصة ممكنة وإلى اللقاء في فيديو آخر إن شاء الله يتعلق بأورام العظام.